So, a little bit of context and happy Christmas, you filthy animals. A little bit of context to what's going on in here and the name Strategy Master Cooker. So, on my Discord, I've got lots of boys on there. There's lots of discussion about different builds and, and things like that. Like, And there seems to be a bit of a fad at the moment with like every sieve being able to do some form of a 10-10. Uh, I, I don't know why, but... You know, just anything's possible in the D meta. So there's been a lot of uh, discussion over the last few days uh, in my Discord about, um, you know, some 10-10 build orders with Dutch or, um, you know, just using using random cards, you know, w which aren't usually used uh, just to see if there's any way of kind of, you know, maybe Dutch, um, you know, having some crazy build order that's not discovered yet or anything like that. And like I said, 1010 seems to be. There was a USA 1010 someone came up with the other day, which is insanely fast. Uh, you know, there's other ones. And it, uh, this week it's been Dutch. So uh, Dutch is a turn. And uh, of course, Strategy Master Cooker is risotto. And if there's a man that can make a crazy build work, it is this man. So we will have a look at his deck very shortly to see what he is cooking. And has left both of his 200 wood on the floor. Interesting. There were some discussions about whether a 10-10 uh, build order, and just for in case anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about when I say 10-10, I mean, you know, uh, max max villagers with the population space. Um, and you always see some really fast age one builds and 10, 10 villagers, 10 max population. That's what 10-10 means. Not building a house, not building any more villagers. But 10 is enough. Did pick up a nice wood treasure there as well, by the way. So uh, that's always fantastic for Dutch. Uh, he is playing Aliug, who is uh, Inca, uh, which is a pretty scary combination. This guy's 2k elo player, at least a 2k elo player. Um, been in the top sort of 20 numerous times. So, yeah, pretty scary player that he's going up against. He's doing some ran some usual stuff. Yeah, pretty usual standard deck from him. But we want to watch what Strategy Master is cooking. We want to see what he's cooking. And what he's cooking is Dutch East Indian Company. Yes. The discussion was heavily led around whether or not this card is worth using or not. So if anyone doesn't know, it gives your banks 7,000 hit points. <laughs> it also minuses the food and wood cost by minus 15%. Um, it, it makes banks 297 food and 297 wood. It basically makes them 300. That the, the easiest way of knowing that it, it basically cuts 50, uh, 50 wood and 50 food off each bank. So I like what he's done by saving the initial 200 wood on the floor. He's picked up a wood treasure here. And yeah, look, first bank is going down at what's the time? Three minutes. Just after three minutes, the first bank is going down. Yo, what's up, Risotto? And, and you might be thinking, what? My eyes do not deceive me. Uh, that is an envoy building a bank. And yes, Dutch East India Company. <laughs> a nice little perk uh, also allows your envoys to construct banks. And you might think that's really weird and random. But it's actually quite a huge, it's quite a huge perk. Because if you think how long, it takes 30 seconds Hello. for a villager to build a bank, right? 30 seconds to build a bank. Um... That's 30 seconds of a villager wasted. And when you've only got 10 of them, that's 10% of your eco having to be used for something other than resource gathering, so for building. So to use an envoy, it's essentially for that 30 second period, it's a villager building. So yeah, that's, that's a really nice, um, that's a really cool little perk to that build. So definitely worth saving your envoy. Um, going for a house and then going for an early market on top of this. So first card is going to be 700 wood in the in the second age. That's just about coming. And don't forget, look at the time. Aliuga's only just staged up. The second bank is already going down. The second bank is already going down. Insane. So now that 700 wood's coming down, and you basically want. I, I've done a, I've done a slightly different build order to this. I've done a slightly different build order, but I'm really liking this. I went for a starting TP, so I've. Um, kind of messed around with um, getting an early TP. Uh, it gives you an insane amount of shipments. <laughs> but uh, you do, obviously, I don't get my first bank as quickly as that, I tell you. And don't forget, banks give you a lot of XP. 
140 XP at the stage of the game is insane. So second bank is down, five minutes. And you've always got to remember, sort of between between uh, the the most the most severe rushes in the game can start hitting you at just after the five minute mark. Uh, most rushes come in about the five minute thirty. Um, so now, currently, the third bank is going down at that at this moment in time. So six hundred wood is going to be the next card. There it comes. And are we going to see the remaining two banks? <laughs> There's the fourth one, and he's just using his envoy, which I really, really like. Just no delay in any villager seconds. It's absolutely fantastic. Getting a church now as well. Maybe adding in some XP there. Or we might even see the church card next, the religious freedom. So absolutely insane build right now. You've never seen anything like this, I guarantee you. And if you are, you're a goddamn liar. Because only the freshest builds get discussed oh, about. Oh, yeah. Yo, kind of boldy. The real Kinnibaldi just subscribed. Merry Xmas, bruv. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Thank you very much, good sir, for the sub. And look at this. It's 6 minutes 20 and the fifth bank is about to go down. That's that's maximum banks right now. Maximum banks. He's now shipping for four villagers, which is which is interesting because it's not it's not a great card. Uh, but I've been Dutch East India Company is considered not a great card, so you know. Um I would like to see 700 food maybe here. I think 700 food would be a good card. Um, but maybe he doesn't even need that. Maybe he doesn't even need that. It, it's the sort of it's sort of time where you could decide to ship town militia if you are being rushed, you know, etc., etc. So, um, lots of options here. A little bit of a cheeky raid going on. TC fire. The stable goes down. Just going to uh, mute my Discord. Here we are. Don't want that popping off. Okay, so Aliag being uh, slightly annoying with the team runners. Essentially doing a, somewhat of a cav raid here. Envoy goes down, but I salute you, Envoy, for all the work that you put in there. Um, he put in a shift and deserves a promotion after that. Uh, now deciding to go for some cab. Which I think is, uh, you know, absolutely fair. Very nice killing that Chimu. The last Chasky going down, but we've got some reinforcing Chimu runners coming in. So Cav looks like a good option here. Free Cav should be enough to deter those five Chimus, especially with TC fire. There it goes down one. Chimu runners do go down to two uh, shots of TC fire, which is nice. Religious Freedom now coming in. Very nice. Very nice. And yeah, look at this. Five banks. Don't forget, these things have 7,000 HP now. So if you are being rushed, that's going to take a long time to siege down. It's more It's more HP than a TC. <laughs> oh, brilliant. So on top of all of this, on top of all of this, he's now aging. Uh, he's got three hazards out. He's got five banks and he's aging up with the prince, right? Yeah, the exile prince. So he's going to be aging up at a really fast time. Uh, Minutemen popping now as well. And he's, his eco is incredible because he shipped four villagers on top of all of this as well as the five banks. Usually what you see is sort of a three bank or a four bank semi. And sort of aged up at the same sort of time as that, but with five banks. He doesn't have quite the infrastructure he has. Uh, as you would if you did a three bank semi or, or even a four bank semi FF. But still looking absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Uh, unfortunate macro there, micro there with the uh, the merchant. Hazard's going to go down. Minutemen are going to do some damage though. Just want to maximise the damage with the Minutemen right now. But he's bought him some time. He's bought him plenty of time. He's on 23 veils. More Chibi runners incoming. So scores neck and neck. Let's have a look at Ali Oki. He's on 30 villagers. Does look like he's on max canters as well. Has Chincha Bruin come in? It has. So he's got max boom as well on top of this. Chima run is being really, really annoying. Just going to be aging up very shortly as well. Oh, but look at this. Religious freedom. The red lances are in. 
Oh, beautiful. At nine minutes, just before 10 minutes of the game, Red Lancers are coming in. That is deadly. That is, that is deadly. And that's the great thing about going five banks is you don't even need villagers on gold. <laughs> You're going to be able to afford these easy peasy lemon squeezy. Yeah. Now we had currently have five Lancers. Five red lancers out. Yeah, coffee trade coming in as well. And don't forget, wow, 1k wood behind this. Don't forget, coffee trade got buffed now. So it doesn't slow down your units. What it does now is it minuses your banks by, I think, 20% HP. Something like that. But somehow it's only lost 700 HP. So I don't really know at what rate. I think it's the 20% of the initial bank. Um, so what's that? Uh, 3,500, right? So 10% is so 700. Uh, so that makes sense, yeah. So 20% of the original bank HP. So it doesn't take into consideration the buff that these banks got, which is absolutely insane because basically this Dutch East India Company, it's still getting its worthlessness out of the bank, uh, out of the buff to the bank HP. So really, really fantastic game play there. Um, it's going to allow him to get a couple more banks down. Um, so Coffee Trade, finally, after being in the game since 2005, finally getting buffed. Uh, it deserved to get buffed. And, um, yeah, look at these beautiful boys. And one thing I do feel like this works really well with is just building a tavern. Like, if you're going this this really heavy bank build, um, I like to put a tavern down. So, um, or a saloon or whatever you want to call it. And basically just go, <laughs> I love how he's still using envoys to build these banks. Brilliant. Building some priests. Very nice. I like that. Yeah, so you can literally, between between having a church, a tavern... And having lots of heavy gold shipment, uh, military shipments in age three. So like Bosniaks, like Swiss pikemen. You don't need any other military uh, military buildings, honestly. Like that's th that's how fantastic this is. You can even to now turn this into industrial build. Like it's got so much potential. Score 2k up. Now on seven banks. That's so shipping that 1k wood. Wow, insane. 1k wood giving him an extra two banks so he's got so many seven banks right now it doesn't matter how many villages he's got he doesn't need any villages and interesting coming in with some elite bolus warriors here they will do uh basically their goons right so they'll do relatively well against these lancers which is getting healed by the priest so very very resourcefulness play there by risotto uh, aka strategy master cooker which is just by the way risotto top tier name <laughs> absolutely top tier name so we've got the red lancers with the bosniaks that's always the dream team right it's always the dream team seeing the red lancers with the bosniaks is he going to see the bolus warriors he is the bolus look at this damage those bolus warriors does oh ho, ho. my goodness me um definitely wants to run that bosniak back before it dies oh but it doesn't die anyway wow fantastic play by risotto there now going to be diving in against these pipemen, which are barely making a scratch on the banks because they've got so much HP. And does run that Bosniak away very nice. Again, being super resourceful. Does lose a Bosniak there, but I think that's going to be the only one. Oh, but that's a lot of bolus warriors. And I was just about to say, what's the counterplay going to be here? But it's going to be industrial. He's going up with the Tycoon. <laughs> so even greedier play by, by Risotto. Why am I not surprised? Just greed after greed after greed. Uh, you can you can basically put all your villagers on wood here as well. And just tur turn this into a, a kind of falconet push as well. That's a lot of scary bolus warriors. But imagine if the tavern had like Jaegers or Pandors or something like that right now. This would be pretty scary. Picks up a couple of villagers. It's not often you see uh, such a huge mass of bolus warriors. Starting to make some Reuters now. So let's have a look at Ali. Let's see what he's cooking. Gone for seven Horakas. Eight bolus warriors so far. Nothing too crazy ecos. It's got, definitely got the two town center option. Maybe the fort as well. He's got nothing that really counters these, bo these bowlers at the moment. So looking quite scary for him. He's got no way of dealing with 35 bowlers warriors. And these guys have air of effect. So they're, they're the type of unit that the more you have of them, the more dangerous they become. Not just because of the mass, but because they benefit. The more you have, the more that you get the benefit out of this two air of effect. So any air of effect type units, um, they get scarier uh, the more you have of them. These guys have 23 siege attacks. So not bad siege attack. And they're... Uh, going to be distracted but oh my goodness me we've got the blue guards now and that's also from the church tech 
These uh, Musketeers would do well against these Bowlers Warriors. So he does have something that will do well. Very, very nice. The Hurakas getting in the mix there as well. Does sacrifice most of his cavalry by the looks of it. But as long as he can make a good dent into these Bowlers Warriors. It's a nice play by Ali. He's, he's uh, countered that play by Risotto really, really well. But then Risotto coming back with the Uno Reverse with the Musketeers. These guys, the Blue Guards, they do get promotions as well. Almost everything that Risotto has made here benefits from promotions. Go have a quick look over at him. See what we've got. We've got some silver promotions, some bronze promotions. No goldies just yet. So look at the stats on a silver boy. The classic two heavies with the blue guards. It's a combination that's been in the game since forever. And it's always been scary. Boom. Heavy cannon shots from the top rope. So he's pushed him back. Very nice. More priests coming in. I think that's smart. And it's always worth any unit that you get better promotions from. It's always worth healing them up. Mercantilism coming out. Like, look how much gold this is producing. This is a seven bank semi FI. I guess you want to call this. I don't know what you want to call it. It's it's in insane. So priest coming out. Got a market there just in case he needs some wood in a pinch. I know that uh, in a pinch is somewhat of a meme now, but. It does have one factory. Did I miss that factory? Oh, it's over here. <clears throat> so factory going on wood by the looks of it. Does have tulip speculation as well. Doesn't have the Akan card though. So slap on the wrist for Risotto for not having the new Akan card. <sighs> Only just now place of mines. <laughs> we got a 17 minute place of mines uh, <laughs> with Dutch. <laughs> But hey, who needs place of mines when you've got seven banks, right? Now making some skirmishers. Like, it would, it's so, right, with the two factories as well, it's so easy now to just transition into South Africa. South Africa, just for that added, for that added extra bit of eco, because why not, you know? Hurricas are out. They'll do well against the heavy cannons. Look at that. Heavy cannons just going down the Hurakas like that. Insane. Heavy cannons are going to survive for a little while and do some damage. But look at that. Two heavy cannons going down and still so many Harakas left. Those Harakas are a menace. Another barracks going down. And he's just trying to fight with kind of a mix of everything here. Skirmishers, Musketeers, Reuters. I think he's going to do well. I think he's going to be able to hold this off. Guard Skirmishers coming in. Oh, we do have a golden boy. 270 HP and 34 uh, range attack. We got to see one before it died. Which is pretty impressive for a musketeer. The, uh, unfortunately, the only way of getting these, these blue guards back is by shipping a fort and making them from the fort. Uh, and at that point, you might as well just make Akans if you can ship the card. Because they're just kind of better at that stage. And you can get like the, uh, the legendary tech or something like that. You know, if you revolt to South Africa and all that kind of crazy stuff. Those Harakas with that insane 23 range. Another bank going down. Did he lose a bank then? No, he's going for another one. He must have shipped. Yeah, he did ship the bank of Amsterdam. So that's going to allow him to get an extra bank. Uh, <laughs> just classic result of the overgreeding. <laughs> and I didn't even look at the score. And just like that, Aliyah just goes, yep. Yeah, Ye I'm out of here. Well, well, just <laughs> congratulations. You just outscored me and like 12k score down. Oh, yeah. He just calls it. And how often do you see Inca get out? out Toblerone like that? 36 just subscribed. Yo, Toblerone, thank you very much, my man. Utter legend. Merry Christmas to you, good sir. And look at that. Did lose a few villagers to some of the raids. Um, But hey, who needs villagers when you have that many banks? And <laughs> man was cooking.
Man was cooking some alchemy with that gold production. And that was a, as a fantastic play. So well played to Risotto.